Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back. My name is Freya. I'm a knitter living in Glasgow with my wife Karina and my two cats Kiska and Manuk. Welcome back to a traditional podcast. <laughs> I have got a lot of things to talk about. Um, I think I've got about six finished objects. I think one whip. Um, so <laughs> I have made a start on all my spring summer knits. Um, surprisingly, I've just I've done a lot. Um, I've been my knitting mojo has been, you know. At an all-time high, or not an all-time high, just high. <laughs> I don't know when my all-time high in it and Mojo was. Um, yeah, tangent. Anyway, I've basically got a lot of knitting done and I'm so excited to talk about it all. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone who engaged in my last video. Um, my spring summer knitting plans. Um, I love making those videos and I got loads of comments and some people reached out to me as well um, and yeah thank you for that and um, as always <laughs> I have links to everything below I will also link my Ravelry wishlist if you want to give me a pattern if you want to support me that way and thank you to everyone who has it's been I, I just love it it's so exciting and somebody gifted me a pattern after my last video and I've already cast it on, that's my only whip. So yeah, I've also got a ko if you want to support me that way or um, I think that's it. <laughs> I always forget what to say in this part. But yeah, um, like, comment, subscribe, that supports me. And if you watch the ads, that supports me. So yeah, all the boring stuff out the way. <laughs> And I think let's just jump into what I'm wearing. So this is a finished object that I've cast on since last time and was actually one of my spring summer knit implants. It is the Flowers Number no. 1 by My Favourite Things Knitwear. A very popular spring summer knitting plans, plan, <laughs> project, pattern, I feel like at the moment and last year as well. Um, so yes, my favourite things knitwear, balls number one. I've got everything written down in my notebook because I will forget it. And I apologise for the sun coming in and out. That's going to get really annoying. Beats. <laughs> anyway, so I knit mine in drop spell in the navy colourway. I knit the size three and I knit on five millimetre, which is actually the needle that is called for in pattern. And that doesn't happen very often that I get gauge with the needle <laughs> that's recommended. Um, and at the size three, I did do a couple of modica modifications that I'll talk about. Um, so I used 344 grams. I think that comes to about 850 meters, something like that. And I think that's less than what is called for in the pattern. I could be wrong, but um, it was a very affordable project because I got the yarn on sale as well. Um, I really want to make another one. <laughs> I just really, I love this pattern so, so, so much. Um, so I'm, I'm going to jump into the knitting of it and then I'll talk about sort of what I think of the final product. So, um, so the modifications that I made. So I cast on for the size three um, and I actually added an extra short row in the back. Um, I don't really know if I can explain it without giving away part of the pattern, but essentially I did another short row and um, I took away that increased row from the next section. So it's the same amount of rows, but just as a short row. <laughs> I'm not explaining that right, but if you've got the pattern, you'll understand how to make that modification by what I said, I think. Um, and I'm glad that I did because it just gives that extra reassurance that it's... I think part of the reason why when I first saw this pattern, I was like, that's really not for me. Because <laughs> I don't like patterns that come right up at the neck. Um, I still feel like it does that, but it's not... It's a little bit annoying, <laughs> but it could be more annoying if I didn't put that extra short row in. So I'm glad I did that. Um, I would definitely recommend doing that if you are also annoyed by things touching your neck, <laughs> as I am. And I also shortened the arm hold depth a little bit. 
and changed the stitch count for the sleeves, kind of. <laughs> so um, it's one of those, is it a compound raglan where um, you increase for the sleeves for a bit and then you increase for the body and the sleeves in that last section. So for the only increasing for the sleeve repeat, I um, did one less than that, which gave me two less stitches on my arm circumference stitch count. <laughs> um, and then I just knit the body and sleeve increase row repeats as pattern. So I took away two rows for that arm depth and that also took away two stitches per arm. Um, which I wanted to do, like I wanted <clears throat> the cir circumference, yeah, the bust circumference to be as pattern, but I wanted the sleeve circumference to be a little bit smaller than the size three, more leaning into the size two, and um, so I'm happy that I did that. I feel like the proportions look um better that way. Uh, hopefully I will have done videos of me wearing things <laughs> that I will put somewhere <laughs> um, that will help, you know, visualise what I'm talking about. But if I was to knit this again, I would shorten the arm depth even more. I'm not sure if you can see it on here, but it's pretty deep. I would, I don't like things touching my armpit. Um, it just annoys me. And so I like deep armholes, but this is a little bit too deep and I feel like this is going to stretch out with wear and that will drop the armhole depth even more, which is going to be annoying. <laughs> and I hope that when I wash it, it will sort of back. <laughs> I hope, but yeah, I feel like, I feel like I could have taken out four more rows, really. And it'd still be a comfortable sort of not touching my armpit length. So I will do that if I knit it again. I will shorten that even more. Um, I think at the beginning you increase for the sleeve every row and then you move into the next row repeat which is increase for the sleeve and then knit the next row. I think I would just carry on the increase in the sleeves every row for a bit longer. Um, therefore taking out those um, plain knit rows in between the increased rows <laughs> and thus shortening the armhole depth um, I think would be the way to go. Um, I think that's pretty much the only kind of modifications that I made. Um, I think I knit the sleeves a little bit shorter and obviously they're two stitches less in the pattern for, my, for the size three and I knit the body length to the size 2 <laughs> body length in the pattern and that's pretty much it. It was such a simple, satisfying, fast project. I think I knit this in six days um, because I was just hooked. <laughs> I just loved knitting on it so much that I just wanted to keep going and it was just really enjoyable. I think the yarn played a big role in that because I feel like it gave such a perfect tension, like there was no like abnormalities in the stitch like size. Um, it just knitted up in a good tension <laughs> without me needing to block it out and for the stitches to kind of like settle. It was just straight up a good tension. I've not actually wet blocked this, I've only really steam blocked it. Um, and I, you know, I didn't need to wet block it for this, like for everything to sort of settle down where it should be. It kind of felt like it was doing that as I was knitting it, which was nice. Um, I've knit one project before with Drop Bell and it was a Thea Top. I um, can't remember who that's by. Um, and that was on a slightly smaller or tighter gauge than this pattern. And I wasn't as much of a fan of the final fabric that that gave. I feel like it was a bit more stiff and cardboardy, <laughs> whereas this is more flowy and it has a nice drape, which the other tighter gauge doesn't really have. 
I feel like that might also be a colourway issue as well. It was in the cream colourway, I think, that I knit that in. And maybe that one is just a bit more stiffer and card body. Whereas this is a little bit, it feels more flowy and slinky. But again, I don't know if that's the gauge or if it's also a colourway sort of that plays into that as well. Um, and so um, for the bind off, <laughs> for the bind off, I wanted to do a no roll bind off. Um, oh, I'm not even, I'm not got my ends yet. <laughs> Oops. Um, and I feel like that's been pretty successful. So I will, I'll show you what the bind off looks like to start with. Um, and it's not massively rolling um which I wanted I didn't want it to really roll um that would just annoy me and it would also take length away which would yeah <laughs> so I researched a couple of um no roll bind offs for just plain stockinette I tried one where you knit the so <laughs> You place like the the bar of two rows down from the live stitches, put it on the left needle and you knit those two stitches together, take that off and then pass that the the stitch on your right needle over that stitch. I tried that and I got halfway and it was just flaring out loads, like it was it was like, it was just flaring out loads. And I was like, I don't really like this. So I went to try another bind off. And so for the bind off that I used, I knit into the stitch on the left needle. I kept that stitch on and I knit into the back loop of that same stitch. Put, put that stitch, pulled, see, took, took that stitch off the left needle and then I passed two stitches over that last needle on the right need wait <laughs> I passed so I knit into the <laughs> I feel like I'm confusing this so I knit into the stitch knit into the back stitch took that off and then passed the two stitches over that last needle on last stitch on the right needle <laughs> um yes and it worked. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the way the bind off came off or it turned out. I feel like it's not really flaring out. It didn't flare out the body and um, the hem. The hem? Or is there a hem? I don't think there's a hem. <laughs> Just the end of the body. It didn't flare that out, which is the look I was going for. I didn't want it to like really flare out and for it to curl up a lot. Um, so yeah, that was a new to me cast off and I really enjoyed it and I will use it again if a project needs just plain stockinette bind off. <laughs> and I think that pretty much, I'm trying to look if I've got any other notes. I think the only other note would be to do with the neckline and my concerns with it stretching out. I feel like there's not a lot of structure going on up here and I feel I can already feel it being pulled down with the weight of the garment and I feel like with wear it's just inevitable that it's going to do that. I can feel that that's what's going to happen. Um, I did cast on with the smaller needle size as stated or asked for in the pattern and so Here's the thing, is that if I was to um, bind off, I mean cast on even tighter, it wouldn't um, have that sort of roll effect that's going on, which I really liked and I wanted that. It would just be like straight across but cinched in more, which isn't really the look that I was going for. So I wanted that sort of relaxed rolling kind of a thing. But with that, you're not getting a lot of structure from that cast on. So I was thinking of passing a, that kind of invisible elastic thread 
that you'd like put in a sewing machine that kind of a thread I was thinking of sort of passing that through the first row and sort of going with you know the stitch if you know what I mean I was thinking of doing that just to sort of give me some kind of comfort <laughs> but um I'm not sure if I'll do that yet I'm kind of like it's it's more it's basically I can't be bothered <laughs> um, I'm gonna wear it a couple of times and see just how much it stretches out and if it stretches out quite a lot I will go back and I will add that kind of elastic in the first row um, and hopefully that will sort of maintain that roll effect but it'll just give me some security in you know the stretching out of the neckline. I feel like you can see my bra strap um, like if it stretches out like there's my bra strap like I feel like if it stretches out anymore it's not like bra friendly <laughs> because you can see it which is annoying but we shall see overall I'm very very happy with the final gown I've not worn it yet I only finished it um a few days ago and but I'm excited to wear it really excited to wear it I feel like it's a wearable color I'm really into my blues at the moment um yeah I don't know why really into my blue era <laughs> so I'm excited to wear it I feel like it's gonna be very wearable Um, I've not got any sort of long sleeve but knitting summer yarn garments so we'll see if it's like the perfect thing for my wardrobe and I'll just wear it all the time so I think we shall move on to my next finished object so I didn't finish this between like my last podcast and this podcast I actually finished it between my last proper podcast and my spring summer knitting plans um, but I didn't want to talk about it in that video because that was all about knitting plans and it wasn't about what I'd already knitted so I just wanted to um, put it in here and talk about it because it's like quite a big, big project and I'm really proud and happy with the final um, the final piece so this is the Umbria Summer Top by Cookie Veneer I knit this in Knitting for Olive Soft Silk in the colour Haze. I used a 3.75 needle and I knit the size, <laughs> just looking at my notes, I knit the size, I have not written what the size is, amazing. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what size I knit, I will link my Ravelry projects below though so <laughs> you can uh, have a look on there. But I did end up modifying this a fair amount just because my gauge was different. So my gauge was tighter than the pattern. I had more rows in my gauge than what was called for in the pattern. Therefore, if I was to knit the pattern as is, it would be a lot shorter. So I had to add in extra plain knit rows. And I did so in the um, increase sections by putting more plain rows in between each increase, um, which worked pretty well. I just did the maths, seeing how many extra rows I needed to do, and then just slotted that in <laughs> um, where I could. And yeah, that worked pretty well. Um, I also, so for a lot of the pictures that I've seen. This first button, it started up pretty high compared to where I wanted it to be. So I started that first button hole um, just a couple of rows later than what was in the pattern. And I really like where it sits now on me. I like that depth. And um, so I'm happy I did that. I also did two extra rows in between each button hole just because my rows would what <laughs> my brew gauge, gauge was tighter so I just added the extra rows I did five buttonholes and then after my last buttonhole I think I did five rows in the main needle size and then I went down to I think a 3.5 and then I knit an extra like six rows and then I just bound off just 
plain bind off, normal bind off, not that no roll bind off, literally just knit one past stitch over, knit one past stitch over. Um, for the sleeves, I feel like I knit the sleeves slightly shorter than what was in pattern, just because um, I I could feel it, like I didn't want it to be really long, I still wanted it to be quite a short sleeve. So I think I knit about six rows before binding off, um, so not a lot at all. So let's talk about the problems I have with this garment. So first of all, I love it, um, but oh, let's talk about the yarn first. So this is my first time, yeah, it's my first time knitting with, um, knitting for Olive Pure Silk, and I have mixed feelings on it. So it was quite, it's quite dry, um, and to me, it felt like I was knitting with cotton. It felt no different. It was a bit that kind of squeaky plant fibre kind of a thing. It, was, it wasn't it was like, this is so luxurious and wow, you can tell that it's an expensive yarn. It just felt like a cotton yarn to me. Now, I've not worn this out of the house. I've only worn it for that video. <laughs> um, so I can't talk about how it wears. However, I feel like it's not gonna wear well in terms of I feel like it's gonna stretch a lot it feels like even just wearing it for that video which was I was maybe wearing it for an hour and a half that day and it already felt like I, I felt so tense because I was like this is stretching out this is stretching out and I feel like that's just gonna keep happening with wear I'm not sure if that um, sort of snaps back when you wash it. I can't remember what other people have said about that. Um, I'll have to just try that for myself, I guess. Um, so what I have done is I have threaded um, that invisible elastic. I'm trying, yeah. I threaded that invisible kind of really thin elastic through the like cast on um like edge so I started um so this is the top of the arm I started at the front top of the arm like here and I thread it all the way through the back again to the top of the arm here so I didn't thread it through this section which is the section that kind of flops over and gives the kind of coral look I didn't thread it through there I just thread it from here to the like to the back and then back again just to give it a little bit of a structure however I don't know how much that's gonna help I feel like I might I might go back and add it also um, just after the ribbing um, section just to give it extra like just to throw <laughs> as much as I can at it and give it a little bit extra structure there um, yeah, so I don't know. I feel I feel a little bit like I could have just knitten this knitting. <laughs> I could just have knit this in cotton and probably have the exact same outcome. But I I've not worn it to and so I don't know what kind of properties that silk has. Like is it cooling? You know, how much different to cotton actually is it to wear? I don't have that information um, at this time so I'm only talking about knitting it and wearing it for an hour and a half kind of my feelings on it um so I wouldn't say no to using this yarn again however if I, if I was to use it again I would probably knit a smaller size with the knowledge that it's going to stretch out. <laughs> um, I do wish I'd knit a smaller size, but I didn't realise quite how much, like, it would stretch out, um, which is annoying because this took a long time. <laughs> I think I started it last year in like June and then I only finished it maybe a month and a half ago. Um, so yeah, one of my longest whips. <laughs> But I'm I'm so glad that I finished it. I'm so glad I have it to wear this um 
this spring summer season. Um, I guess I'll just quickly talk about the buttons as well. So um, these buttons are, let me see if I can get a close up. These buttons are from Textile Garden and they are, let me just see what they are. They're the simple grey Caruso buttons in 11 millimetres and they are gorgeous. They're slightly mottled and um, I think the colour goes really well and they feel really good quality. I have used their buttons once before on my champagne cardigan and I love, love, love those. I bought um, one more set of buttons that I haven't yet to use but they are stunning and I I just bought them because they were beautiful. I've not actually got an idea of a project to use that with but yes, I really enjoy their buttons and I would highly recommend them and they're pretty affordable. Oh, they are pretty affordable um, for the quality and how beautiful they are and they have so it's such a big selection so yeah it, it would be hard not to find buttons that you like I think and um, so I would highly recommend so I think that's everything that I want to say on that I'm hoping to do a video where after, maybe after spring summer I will do a roundup of how well different yarns wore, how they held up, my feelings and thoughts on the garments and yeah how how the yarn held up basically because I for me personally I'm interested so just to document that would be interesting for me but I think yeah it would also be yeah, um yeah <laughs> yeah I'm going on a tangent anyway so let's go into my next finished object which is the Very V-neck by Jessie Maid. Again, sorry, oh, I've got it all on the table. <laughs> um, so this was also, I think, yeah, this was in my spring summer knitting plan video. <laughs> yeah, this is the Very V-neck by Jessie Maid and I I've knit this once before, so this is my second time knitting it, and I I love knitting this pattern. It's quite a loose gauge, um, and it's cropped and all of that, so it doesn't take long at all, which was fun. <laughs> Again, another project that hardly took any time. So I knit the size two, and the yarn that I used was Lime Lace Mohair. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, I'm not going to try and pronounce it, <laughs> um, but I only used 60 grams of that, which is insane. I did play a massive game of yarn chicken and I think I had about this much left of the mohair, which is crazy. I actually put a plea out on my Instagram stories to see if anybody had any grey mohair that would, you know, look the same because I was so adamant that I was going to run out. I was weighing it after <laughs> every row and then I was working out how many grams it took to knit the row um, and I was trying to figure out how long I could knit it and in the end I think I would have liked to have knit it maybe two rows longer but I will take that. I will take that, like I, I, I think I won. <laughs> I think I won. It's wearable, it's still a little bit cropped I think, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to try it on and do a video and then um, I tried it on once, like I've just finished this, it's like come off the blocking mats just a couple of days ago so I've not worn it out of the house, but I tried it on just like in the house, so I've not tried it on with my like jeans or anything like that to see where the lens sits like that so um, yeah I'll see what it looks like in the video <laughs> but um, overall I'm really happy with this so the modifications that I made was that I split for sleeves I think maybe six rows before the pattern says to just because in my other one the armhole depth is really long and 
The arm hole depth on this is really long as well. I didn't really um, counteract that. I mean, it would have been even longer if I did it to pattern, so I'm glad that I did that. and made it shorter, but if I was to knit it again, I would make it even shorter. Um, so I just joined, well, I split it for sleeves and then I carried on knitting flat until I'd increased for the v-neck and then I joined in round after that and just knit it. Um, so, so some other modifications that I made. Oh, I didn't talk about the other yarn that I held it with. <laughs> so the other yarn that I held it with is actually a um, cone of yarn. I'm looking, I'm, I'm not actually sure where I put that. <laughs> Um, I don't, I don't know where I put that. I don't know where I put it, so I can't show you. Um, but so the yarn that I held with the mohair is a yarn on cone yarn. That's the, what the website is called. It's just called yarn on cone, and it is a merino and cashmere blend. I believe off the top of my head, and I could be wrong, but I believe it's seventy five percent merino and 25% cashmere. It was a pretty much a lace weight. I mean, it was a lace weight. Um, it was a hundred, no, 1,750 meters per 250 grams. I can't work out what that is for a hundred grams, but I held it double, which gave me pretty much I think it gave me a heavy fingering weight, leaning into sport weight yarn, I believe, um, which was perfect for this. And it, it's honestly gorgeous. Like it's so soft. The mohair is already so soft. So the addition of the merino and the cashmere is just perfect. It's not a color match. It is a bit mottled. I don't know how much you can see. The mohair is like a dark grey leaning into like, you know, the blacks and the merino cashmere is a navy. So it's a bit mottled, but from far away, it doesn't look weird. Um, so I'm happy with that. There was only four colours available anyway. It was like two bright pink ones, one um, medium kind of grey and then one navy. I could have gone for the grey, but I either wanted to hold the mohair with the black or, yeah, I originally I wanted to hold it with the black and this dark navy was kind of close to a black. I spoke about what yarns I wanted to use in my spring summer knitting patterns video and it was all drops and um, yarn. And then I was like, well, I've wanted to try this yarn from Yarn on Coon for ages and I thought, let's just do it. I think it was £16 for 250 grams. So it was like round about the same price as the drops. And I've already used drops yarn so much. Like it doesn't necessarily spark the same amount of joy any more than it did um, back when I was using for the first couple of times. Uh, so I was happy to sort of branch out and use a yarn that I've not used before. And it has made such a gorgeous drape. It's so soft, it feels so luxurious. <laughs> Actually the mohair was a gift from a subscriber, um, a viewer, so <laughs> thank you so much. I actually knit my champagne cardigan using, um, using it originally and I had enough left over I think no I, I I can't remember <laughs> I can't remember how much I had left over but I used every single scrap for this and I'm so glad I managed to squeeze out another garment a wearable garment as well it's in such a colour you can tell I'm in my blue era another navy <laughs> um it's in such a colour where it's a neutral really and I could wear it with pretty much anything so it's gonna get a lot of wear um, so yes, circling back to the modifications I made, I actually added some decreases on the body. So I knit 10 rows and then I decreased um, every 8 rows after that, 3 times in total. I also, however, 
<laughs> added quite a few short rows into this pattern. So as I said, I've knit this pattern before and in that the back is so much lower than the front to the point where it's annoying. <laughs> it's really annoying. Back when I started knitting, I really liked the look of having a really low back and a higher hem, higher front, <laughs> higher front. Um, I just really like that look, but moving forward and now I'm not a fan of that look. I like it to be equal all the way around. Um, so I knew I had it, had it. I knew I had to introduce some short rows on the front. So what I did was after knitting 10 rows on the body, I did two sets of short rows, so on the front. So I knit across, I think I knit across maybe two or three stitches past the um, centre of the underarm, went back across again two or three stitches past that, went back across and then I think I did four stitches past the last double stitch and again back the way did the same and then I just carried on knitting until I reached the length that I wanted and then I did another set of increases and short rows <laughs> just before the rib hem so I just did one extra short row there just to again try to <laughs> shorten it even more I think if I was to knit it again I might even add one more extra short row but we shall see what I think when I have worn it Um, I think it's fine how it is so yeah it was just like yeah if I knit it again I might do it I might not I don't know we'll see how it wears Um, but one thing I also did was I added a short row at the back um, of the ribbing like um, so I picked up the stitches for the ribbing for the neck and then on that first round I just did a little short row on the back just you know from you know just the back neck basically now I did this to um push like what words am I trying to use here to raise I did that to raise the actual ribbing for the neck um, because it does drop down quite low the, the ribbing on the back so I wanted just to raise that up a little bit but I think it just dropped the hem <laughs> at the back so I think I might just erase that short row the next time and then maybe I wouldn't feel like I needed to add another short row to the front so that's just another thing that I'm like ugh, that's annoying I wanted it to do one thing and then it did the opposite thing that I was trying to stop happening but it's fine it's not going to stop me from wearing it I still like if you weren't the one who knitted it I don't think you would either ever I don't think you would ever realize um all of these things but obviously as a person that knit it you are <laughs> hyper aware of all of these things um so yeah I think that's everything that I want to say about that um yeah and I guess we'll just move right on to my next finished object so which one am I going to talk about first um let's talk about the shorts first um so I bought um this cotton yarn I think I bought it last year um with the thought of knitting a like a a two piece what, what is a cord um of a pair of shorts and then like a just like a summer vesty top um which is what I have done this year not a fan of the color anymore I don't know what I was kind of thinking of when I bought this color <laughs> um and honestly the only reason why I kind of knit with this yarn is because I desperately want to knit my stash and um I was kind of adding like I was at sort of like a decision fatigue place because it was just after my knitting plans video and I had all these ideas kind of swirling through my head um 
and I was like, right, what yarn do I have? What can I cast on straight away? Um, what takes up the least amount of brain space? And I'd already made this plan last year. I had all the yarn for it. I knew that I wouldn't be playing yarn chicken. Um, so I just cast it on just as something to do whilst I thought about um, what yarn I wanted to knit this in, what yarn I wanted to knit the very v-neck in. I was also waiting on this yarn coming back in stock um, so I couldn't even buy this yarn anyway <laughs> even when I had decided what yarn I wanted to use. So I just basically cast it on just as something to do not necessarily going, oh, I can't wait to have the finished object, can't wait to wear this, like, I've not worn these yet. <laughs> um, but just there's something to do. And I'd, I've already actually already knit these before. I knit this maybe three years ago, it must be now, um, out of, like, a mustard colour. And honestly, I'm not a shorts person. I don't wear them out the house. I wore the other shorts as, like, pyjama shorts or around the house when it's really hot um, but otherwise I'm not a shorts kind of a person so again I had that in mind when I was knitting this I was like this is just pyjamas it's not to wear out the house doesn't need to be perfect um, however there are a few things that I would change so let's see I knit the size 4 the yarn I've not even talked about <laughs> the yarn is dropped saffron in colour 55 um, I knit this, yeah I knit the size 4 on 3.75 millimetres and um, I'm pretty happy with the size that I chose apart from the depth <laughs> of like the main body thing sections Um, this part it's too long so as I was knitting it my other ones that I've already knit before they are also too long and I knew this so I was like right let's take away some of the um extra like plain knit rows in between the increases to shorten it however I think my row gauge was slightly looser so there were less stitches per four inches for my row gauge so it kind of counteracted each other and it ended up being the length that I stated in the pattern which is too long so I think it ended up being 11 and a quarter inches for that body I don't I don't really know how you what, what you'd call that the body of the shorts <laughs> um and if I was to knit this again I would probably shorten it to about nine and three quarter inches um for that body part just because it does drop down pretty low um it doesn't annoy me enough to rip out and fix because honestly it's probably a good thing that they're quite loose because you know I'll be wearing it when it's really hot and for pyjama shorts it doesn't really matter like I would prefer like I prefer to wear looser things when I'm sleeping anyway so it's not like ugh, that's I mean it is annoying I'm not gonna lie it is annoying <laughs> but it's not like I won't wear them I probably won't wear them as much but I will still wear them and anyway it was just something to do to get something out of stash and just for something to do with my hands anyway so it's not like a big loss um, and the only other modification that I made was I knit the icon longer by a couple of inches than in the pattern and I also um, basically for the leg you you shape it with short rows so you end up getting this kind of like um, curve on the edge of the leg on the out outer part of the leg um, and it was already pretty long so I just did a couple of ex I mean, I mean what <laughs> a couple less short rows than in the pattern and that's it that's the only modifications that I made I've only steam blocked this I don't feel like it needs a wet block yet I'll just wash it when I wear them and yeah overall I'm pretty happy I really enjoy this pattern it's not I wouldn't describe it as difficult um yeah I wouldn't describe it as difficult like don't be 
put off because it's like if you're a jumper and top only knitter don't be put off that it's like shorts and it's like different it's really not that much different it's essentially like a raglan construction and then when you split the legs it's just like splitting the sleeves and then it's just short rows so it's not it's not difficult I don't think and I would highly recommend that pattern it's just like a go-to um plain um short pattern that yeah is just simple it does what it does and yeah I really like that pattern and I probably will knit them again I'm not gonna lie um yes okay let's move on to my next finished object the sun going out is really annoying me um, and I'm hoping it's not picking up too much on the camera but I feel like it might which is annoying anyway let's move on to my next finished object which is this and I shall do it up whilst I'm talking about this so this is actually a self-draft I completely made up the pattern I wrote the pattern and I knit it up I first had the idea for this when I saw um a like a shop like a shop ball. I seen a top on ASOS and I really liked it and it gave me the inspiration to knit one that is very similar. I actually didn't ended up buying that top <laughs> um after I started to make this. So this is it. It's just like a plain, um, nothing ground breaking, um, v-neck summer tank top. Um, however, the class, like the closure is actually, um, what do you call it? Hook and eyes. Um, if you can, <laughs> this is bad. This is really bad, me trying to show this, if you can see. Um, hook and eye closures instead of like buttons or anything like that. The original that inspired me actually has ties, like eye cord ties, and I think I might go in and add maybe um, a tie here and maybe a tie here just because I think it looks a little bit weird. It's like neither here nor there, I don't really know what it's trying to be. <laughs> um, but I do really enjoy the kind of invisible closure look. Um, I do really enjoy it and I'm so, so, so proud of this. I took measurements of, so I have been, oh, I feel like I knocked the camera there. <laughs> I have been designing pieces on my knitting machine, self-drafting them, writing up the pattern, knitting them, all of that kind of stuff. So I kind of took a template of the um, measurement from a v-neck slipover that I've designed on the knitting machine. I got the measurements, I did a gauge swatch in this yarn, I did all the maths to see how many stitches, how many increases, the rate of increases, all of that stuff. Wrote a pattern, knit it up basically and yeah that's just what I did. I added eye cord edgings around the armholes around the whole neck. I did a folded hem. So this is knit top down. So I uh, yeah started on the back, picked up the front sections, joined, well I knit back and forth because it's like an open kind of cardian kind of a thing. And then I knit the and knit down knit the hem kind of section and then I folded it over and then I actually sewed it down directly like I sewed the live stitches down um, to the main body instead of casting off and then sewing down just because I prefer to sew down live stitches and casting off and then sewing the cast off edge down because I can be more in control of that kind of tension like if I was to cast it off 
too tightly and then sew it down it would cinch it in and it would just annoy me whereas if I sew down the live stitches directly I can have that control whilst I'm doing it if you know what I mean and that's just my preferred way of doing it and yeah there's not really much to say about this because it's not a pattern I can't go yes I can recommend this pattern it's good it's well written um it's a pattern by the <laughs> it's a self draft um a little tangent about pattern designing if you're not interested just skip to the next finished object but um yes I have slowly been designing patterns on the knitting machine with the hopes of setting up a business and selling them and um as kind of stopped for now I it's a lot like a lot a lot and there's so many different things to think about um and I kind of hit a roadblock when I hit a point where I've got all my designs they're great um patterns great however they're all in one size they're all to fit me and I hit a kind of a roadblock where I was like I need to grid it for other sizes but I just couldn't wrap my head around how to do that I couldn't find good free resources online and I was already um I'd done a course with the Princess Trust which essentially helps people set up their own business Um, I'd done a course about the business side and then um, after that, it kind of opens you up to maybe finding a mentor or be able to talk to an accountant there. Um, and this is all like a charity, so it's all like free and they help you and they can give you a grant to start your business. But another thing that they can do is um, give you grants to do courses. And the only, like I kept, I. I messaged so many people, I messaged designers, I messaged graders to tell me where did, where did you learn how to do this um, or do you know any good free resources to do this or books and everyone kind of came back to me and said Sister Mountain Yan, wait what's it called? Sister Mountain? Sister, is that just what it's called? Sister Mountain? Sister Mountain. <laughs> everyone came back to me and said like this is like the only course However, pretty expensive. So I went back to the Princess Trust and I said, look, in order to start my business, I need to greed my patterns, right? And I said, this is the only course I can find. Will you fund it for me? And after back and forth of like talking to them, talking to Sister Mountain, eventually they agreed to fund the course for me. So now I'm at a point where I'm doing the course and I'm learning about it and I'm extremely overwhelmed with it all and I've kind of not done it for a while because I'm just so overwhelmed, there's so much information and I'm a, the kind of learner that I learn through doing so I kind of need to come up with a hand knit pattern so I can learn the steps as I am doing this hand knit pattern <laughs> um, instead of a machine knit pattern because I'll have to learn how to do it for the hand knitting and then transfer those techniques over to machine knitting and I'm not at a point where I can do that I need to just start do one hand knit pattern and then learn the techniques and then transfer over so this is a long-winded way of saying <laughs> I want to come up with a very very simple drop down shoulder hand knit pattern so I can learn how to greed and then transfer those skills into other things. <sighs> the course is for jumpers and I would love to jump into starting with this pattern however this would be in under the um, set and sleeve instructions only I would not do the sleeve <laughs> um, which is a more complicated um, construction than just a drop shoulder <laughs> oh my gosh I'm going round and round in circles but basically yes and then I was 
I'm kind of doing this course and thinking and thinking and like should I jump straight into launching a business where I am physically knitting my garments and selling physical garments or after doing this course learning everything pattern writing grading putting a pattern together all of that stuff after learning all of that do I go into pattern writing and start there which would include a lot less things in terms of like a website, business cards, <laughs> packaging, all of that as you can probably imagine so much stuff just tax business set up like it's so confusing to me it's I, I have done the course but it's still confusing to me so that's a really long-winded tangent about what I want my career to be in knitting I've always wanted a career in knitting. I cannot find a job with anyone else in the knitting world. So I have decided to create my own job in the knitting world. But now I'm thinking about what part of the knitting industry I want to branch into. I'm thinking at this point that I'm going to start with pattern writing and then go into physical production um but we shall see uh, that probably won't be for a year <laughs> just because um i have in therapy <laughs> like i have bipolar and cptsd and all that good stuff and after doing therapy um we've talked a lot about pacing and for me it seems that I have to go a lot slower than maybe the average person that doesn't have bipolar or CPTSD in order to sort of um, stay at a level point and not, you know, have those kind of, yeah, interference of the bad things that come with bipolar and CPTSD so yeah I'm trying to pace it so I've not spoke about it on my podcast yet because I don't want um people to think that I'm gonna do it in the next like month <laughs> it's probably gonna be in a year's time when I'm like really thought about everything I've got like three or four designs that I've already written blah 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 anyway that's my massive 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 tangent about me my knitting life and yeah that was a lot <laughs> that was a lot a lot um so let's move into my um final finished object which is actually a pair of socks so um i had finished the shorts and that top and i was waiting on yarn arriving for this and the very v-neck and i was like what do I knit on because I don't have anything to knit on so I decided to cast on a pair of socks of course I've not knit socks in ages I've just not had the motivation to however these are thicker socks so they take less time and they're also pretty enjoyable these are the I'm Ecstatic socks by Cool Stitches it's a pay what you want pattern which um and I think you can only get it on her website. I could be wrong, but I got it on her website. Um, I've knit this, these before in like a mustardy colour. And I knit it, I knit these in Ching Fibre Fjord, held together with Rico Essentials Mohair that I had left over from um, a jumper that I made. So, um, I knit my other pair in Ching Fibre Fjord and a Drops Mohair, so it's pretty much identical to this. And I knit the size 3 on 3.25mm needles. I did 4 um, cable repeats for the leg. I did the heel as written in pattern. I think it's a shadow wrap heel is the official name. And then I did 5 cable repeats plus three rows before doing the toe 
And for the toe, I just did one extra decrease repeat before uh, ironing off. And it's pretty much as simple as that. It's really satisfying. Um, it's just a very, like, the most simple cable that you could do. I think it, you do it every, like, 10 or 11 rows. And yeah, I really like this heel construction. Because it's a bit stretchier, because it's essentially like ribbing and it's on a larger needle and also I knit this so that it would be a loose fit on my foot anyway, I I feel like there is enough room, like I have a really high instep, so on my normal like fingering weight, um, smaller gauge socks, I really have to be mindful of how much extra fabric I'm adding in like it needs to be quite considerable more quite more a considerable amount more <laughs> than usually patterns ask for however I can get away with just doing the shadow wrap heel on this and actually I would be um interested or intrigued to see what the fit would be like if I did this on a fingering weight um pattern um, just because I really enjoy doing this kind of heel, I find it very satisfying. It's faster <laughs> than the heel flap and gusset, which I usually do. However, I have knit um, the Lima socks by... I don't know who. <laughs> and I really enjoyed that heel construction. That is not a heel flap and gusset. You increase um, for the back of the heel and then you do a heel turn and then you decrease? No. Oh, I don't know. It's not a heel flap and gusset anyway, and I really enjoyed that construction. Um, so I'm interested to see what this would be like in a finger and weight. But anyway, so I really like these socks. I like this pattern. It's simple enough, but it's engaging enough for it to be just a nice filler. <laughs> project between projects where you maybe just need a break or you just need something a bit more mindful, mindful, mindless if you've done a really intense project or maybe you've done just a plain stockinette project and you need something just a little more engaging than just stockinette again. This is a really good pattern and I've wanted another pair of these since I finished my other ones and I enjoy the yarn combination, um, I think it's really great. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's just a pair of socks, a really good pair of socks and I really enjoy it and I would highly recommend the pattern. Okay, so <laughs> finally I'm coming towards the end and I've got one whip that I wanna talk about. So this is the Raw Tea by, oh, let me get it. And let me look at my notes and see. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to pronounce this properly. Lonely. I'm not going to try. <laughs> I'm not going to try. I'm sorry. I'm really bad at pronunciation um, at the best of times. And that's just too difficult. I'm sorry. And I will butcher it. And I, I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> anyway. So, yes. Let's talk about this project. So I spoke about this in my spring knitting plan, spring, spring summer knitting plans video and how I was very excited about this pattern. So it's a t-shirt pattern and it's pretty plain but it's got um like interesting uh, details <laughs> um uh, all over like the what do you call it? Neckline and the sleeves and the hem. Um, I'll put a picture up of the final uh, garment so you can understand what I'm talking about. But this is as far as I've gotten and I am really enjoying it so far. This is actually my second attempt at starting this project. I started it and I realised that my gauge was too big and it ended up being 
far too wide. I have not ripped it out because I couldn't bring myself to. I just started again because I just couldn't. I just couldn't. I was like, if I've got to rip it out and knit it, I'm not gonna do it. So I just immediately cast on again. Um, yes, so <laughs> um, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I didn't try and like um, soldier on with, um, with that initial start. I mean, that, that only took two days. So I would only lose two days of work, which was fine. Like I'm glad that um, that I did that. So I've done the back. I picked up for the left side and I'm ready to pick up for the right side before joining the two fronts together. Um, so yeah, and I mean, to be honest, it's not really much to say about this yet. Um, apart from the fact that I had to restart which is annoying. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I am knitting this using Drop Saffron again in the colour 18, which is off-white cream colour. And I'm knitting a size one. I, so I've changed the stitch patterns a bit though. <laughs> so I have, the first attempt was on 3.75 millimetre. Realised it was too big a gauge went down to a 3.5 millimetre for this one, but I also um, took away six stitches from the initial cast on stitch amount. That, so, cause I feel, I didn't do another gauge swatch basically. And I felt like, I felt like it wouldn't, I felt like I still needed to take away some stitches because I don't, I don't want this to be I think it would come out really, not considerably oversized, but maybe more oversized than what I want. Um, and I'm already knitting the smaller size that they do. They don't do one smaller, so I couldn't follow, you know, a smaller size to get the amount of ease that I actually want out of this. So I just took away some stitches um, and I've just, I'm just gonna carry that on and I'll have, 12 less 12 less stitches altogether for the circumference of the body which I think is fine and I think that will give me the circumference that I really want. I still think that this maybe is the, the gauge is maybe still a little bit loose compared to the pattern but I'm not sure. Um, I'm not going to block it halfway through or anything like that. I'm just going to go for it. I mean it's going to be oversized anyway. Um, I just don't know how oversized yet, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, so I've done one pick up and you can kind of see the beginnings of the details that are coming through. So you actually pick up from the wrong side and you pick up from one row below the cast on. So you can see, I'm sorry if you can hear um, the neighbor's dog there. <laughs> So you can see the cast on edge and you can also see that first pearl bump row from the pickup um, and I'm really enjoying the details so far. It's carried on all across like the neckline, the sleeves, the bottom and all of that. Um, it's one of the things that made me fall in love with this pattern because I love simple patterns that have interesting details and that is just like the epitome of this pattern basically. Um, so yes, that is everything and well, okay, I'm going to talk about some swatches that I've done though, <laughs> um, just to throw it in at the end, even though I'm pretty sure this is going to be really long, but I just wanted to, um, to show you some swatches because I think I'm going to cast these on. I don't think I'm going to finish that whole project for casting something else on, just because it's a small gauge and I think it's going to take a while. <laughs> so I want something on a larger gauge at the same time just to sort of flip in between. So I've done two gauge swatches. So this is actually um, a gauge swatch that I ripped out and I've re -knit. So this is Phil Kalana Panilla and I can't remember the mohair, but the mohair was gifted by a very kind viewer um, and I bought the panilla to go along with the mohair. And originally I was going to knit the waffle loop sweater 
by I can't remember other loops um, and that was what I initially knit this swatch off in I started knitting that jumper and I I realized that it wasn't giving me the fit that I really wanted and I didn't want to take the risk of knitting finishing that project getting the final gown and not being really happy with it and not really wearing it a lot so I decided to bench that idea and go back to it and knit it with a different yarn because I really want to use this special yarn <laughs> for project a project that I will get a lot of use out of so I swatched again with a five millimeter um, and I believe I'm going to knit the Sophie wrap sweater um, I've knit this once before recently and I really like it and I think it would look amazing in this yarn and I think if I knit that out of this yarn I can also squeeze out another small project using the same yarn which would be amazing and yeah I'm really happy with the swatch it's a beautiful combination of yarn soft the drape is nice it feels like it's gonna hold its shape <laughs> which is a nice um it's nice to sort of go back to that comfort of wool knowing that it will sort of hold its shape whereas like a lot of summer yarns they're gonna stretch out just that's just what they do which is annoying but so yeah I swatched with a, a wool kind of animal fiber yarn just because um, I think it'd be nice to have a plant-based yarn and an animal fibre yarn at the same time just to sort of give my hands a break in between. Um, I also did one more swatch and this is actually to knit another blouse number one. Um, so I bought a cone of yarn for my knitting machine um, so that I could start designing some summer pieces um, which obviously like it would be nice to have a wool collection and a summer kind of collection just you know for the the varied seasons um and this is kind of like a thick thin kind of a yarn and i had i i did a gauge swatch i knit the front um panel of a whole um summer garment on the knitting machine and it was just it was with every row it was such a workout like it it wasn't gliding through the knitting machine it wasn't an enjoyable process it was hurting me so I've not knit on that for ages and it's just been sat on my knitting machine and then I was just like this yarn would be perfect for blouse number one it's a viscose linen blend and held four strands together is pretty much identical to drop spell um, so I decided to swatch it and you can see how hopefully you can see how nice it treats it's it the final fabric is really really nice it's so drapey and um, perfect summer yarn um, it's a little bit uh, annoying to knit with because it's four strands together and they don't like grip onto each other so it's very like splitty um but I love the outcome um I'm not sure how much it'll pick up but um so yeah and I am at such a gauge where I can it's usable for the blouse number one I will be able to knit it up using this yarn and I think I'm gonna do that instead of soldiering on with my machine knit <laughs> pattern um, I think this yarn I would enjoy knitting this yarn more um, with this and getting a different summer yarn to use on the knitting machine that goes through more smoothly basically uh, so yeah that's what's next that's what I'm gonna cast on next and hopefully I should have that to show you in my next podcast okay I feel like it's a long one <laughs> I'm going to go and film me wearing all the things that I've spoken about and edit it and then upload it so thank you for watching if you've watched all the way to the end 
Um, I feel like I've spoken a lot today. <laughs> Uh, and hopefully I shall see you soon for another podcast or another something. I, I really want to do a yarn review of some of yarns but I feel like maybe I should wait to like wear some pieces first but I don't know we'll see we'll see. Uh, so yeah thank you for watching and I shall see you next time. Bye!